It's Todd Owens with Capital Chaos TV, and we're here tonight at the Oakland Metro in Oakland, California, with uh, Paul from Master. How you doing tonight, Paul? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for the uh, opportunity to speak with you. Happy to be here, of course. Um, so, just briefly talk about the uh, little current tour you guys are on, and uh, how the tour's been going, and where it goes from here. Oh, uh, we're running across the USA. Uh, we began uh, in North Carolina, I believe, and a uh, lot well, of tours running well. It could always be better. <laughs> How many uh, dates in total on the tour? 20. Actually, 20, 20 dates. dates. And uh, we're on our way uh, tomorrow to, uh, what, yeah, what was it? <laughs> Rosebead. Yeah. Rosebead, Rosebead and then Pomona, you said. Yeah, and Pomona, then Arizona, and Texas. Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, back to Florida, and home. But it's running well, you know. And uh, I guess Hate Storm Annihilation is with you on all the dates, pretty much? or, or? Yeah, they're, they're on us with the whole tour. And so is this... Uh, uh, Aries band too. Okay. Age of Aries, yo. Yeah. I think it's Age of Aries, yes. And then, um, so there was supposed to be some, uh, a couple other bands, uh, I guess, uh, Fist Hammer and Nervo Chaos, I guess. Yeah, and there's Hammer. issues. Yeah, Fist Hammer pulled out because they just did a tour and lost their ass and made no money, so they couldn't afford to get on this tour. Okay. Now, as for Nervo Chaos, the U.S. government never finalized their visas. They applied in October, which is plenty of time, and they still don't have their visas. Seems like that's an ongoing issue with bands coming over here, and uh, and not just that they get denied, but that there's always this uncertainty about the whole process. And yeah, well, it's a problem. You know, you book a whole tour with a band and they can't come over, and it's like, uh, like you said, it's a, it's a government issue, and it's a problem because any American or just about anyone, period, can go to Europe and walk right in with their guitar, no questions asked, no questions about taxes. I realize the USA is broken and need money, but to take the money from the musicians, I really don't think that's the way. It's a form of entertainment, you know? We're out here sharing our views on life and playing our metal, and that's rock and roll. It shouldn't be about tax. Fucking A. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to talk about the, the last album was, uh, I guess, last year was released, yeah, uh, The Witch Hunt. Hunt. Uh -huh. And uh, when was it released? 2013? So uh, September. Okay, so about six, seven months or whatever. How's, yeah. how's, how's the album been? How's your, what's your reaction to the album now? It's been out for a while. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's selling. Yeah. People like it. The reviews are good. We're getting offers for shows and tours constantly. A tremendously brutal album, I will say that. All right. Well, you put your heart and soul into every record and hope for the best. And I think it came out really well. And the uh, the lineup that you use, so you have a unique situation where you have a recording lineup and then you come over here with different guys or is it everybody that's, uh, how's that work? Actually the European guys, they do South America, they do, they're going to do Mexico this year and they do all the European shows, the tours and the festivals. But again, because of the visa. It's just in America. Yeah, I don't want to pay all this money to the US government to have them follow me around with with a poop bag, counting my money and my pennies, and, and you have to pay for the visas, the work permits, and uh, then the tax thing comes up again, and it's, it's not metal, man, whatever. So I use American musicians, my friend Alex Books from Incantation and Gorophobia, uh, Rustin Gross, I've used him for the last uh, three tours, and I have a second guitar player on the tour as well, Wild Bill. And, and I know I saw you last year. It was a great performance, but it's kind of must be mixed for you that that you can't bring the the guys that you've been because those this lineup now has been about 11 years, I believe, that yeah. you guys have been together and recorded five or six yeah, albums. Yes, yeah, not being able to bring the guys, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I have talented musicians here in America that are willing to work and they're professionals, so to do what you know, do what I have to do. Um. And then uh, more touring or future tours. I know you got some festivals lined up in Europe. Festivals through the summer. Uh, I've got m another tour in October, another tour in November, a Mexican tour. I'm busy every year. Uh, I'm busy until December this this year. We're doing about 120 dates a year. So, notice one that stood out to me was on the, in the 20th of June in, in Germany, the Grind the Nazi Scum Festival. So that should be a, so a good lineup. And also we're playing uh, Summer Breeze this year. And, uh, obscene. obscene upstream in the in your Czech Republic. It's a hometown show for you now, right? Great. So, so speaking of that, you've been over and uh, living over there for I guess 14 years. You said 14 years. Yeah, I like it. And, and how did that come about initially? And then uh, I guess you're happy there because you've stayed there for so long. I was on tour with uh, with Malevolent Creation, Master, and Kravathor. I met these guys while on a European tour in uh, 1998, 99. Yeah. And uh, I hooked up with the guys, and their bass player quit the band, Kravathor, and they offered me a position. 
and any musician is going to go where work is. If you're a professional, you're going to go. I took the offer. I never look back. You know, and life in Czech is good, of course. That's why I'm still there. You know. It. And uh, that's where they're based out of, I guess, the band. Yeah, the uh, drummer is Denek Perlovsky. He's from Slovakia, but right next door it used to be Czechoslovakia. You know, and then uh, the guitar player Alex Neas Kleba is from Czech. And like you said, 11 years, success, albums, tours, every year, we're busy. What's uh, what's the, if there is a metal scene in the Czech Republic, or what's the scene like there? Like Germany, it's one of the biggest metal scenes in the world. You've got masses of rock every year, obscene extreme every year, brutal assault, trooting off, number of festivals. And like sometimes you have these festivals going on the same weekend, and there'll be 30 or 40,000 at each festival that same weekend. So there's really a scene, for sure. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the, the master sound um, because you've over this 25 years or whatever you've been releasing albums or 30 years you've been together had a, kind of a sim a s album sound a little different but it's got something distinct about it I guess it would you say master and I know it's interesting I've read, I think I've read in other interviews where you've talked about not listening to a, maybe as much contemporary or current music you listen to the same stuff you were listening to maybe 30 years ago so sure it's that's why you're still writing the so same stuff change yeah yeah I was a lot of punk and hardcore yeah, back in the day. GVH and MDC and Discharge and Motorhead, Black Sabbath, Rainbow, Deep Purple. I listen to old rock and old punk as well. And like you said, then my view is still the same, and I'm still churning out the same kind of music, you know? It's like I, I, the reason why I don't listen to the modern quote-unquote bands is that, for me, they offer nothing new. And on the other hand, I don't want to be copying stuff that I was a part of creating again. So for me, it's fresh if I do it my own way, you know? Cool. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the early days, just a little bit briefly. And uh, it was 83, I guess. You were in a band, Warcry, and then that kind of the ashes of that came Master, Death Strike, and then Master again, or something like that. I don't know, maybe you can just clear it up a little bit. Actually, what happened is I discovered the uh, Venom 7-inch. We welcome to hell and live like an angel. Died. What kind of music was Warcry? I, I listened to I actually, I was like, actually listened to a demo on online today. Black Sabbath, yo, it was kind of a Black Sabbath with sort of a Dio like singer. Nobody can be Dio. Dio's the best, you know. But, but this kind of style. It's too good influence. It's Sabbath and Dio. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying this kind of style. And then I discovered this Venom seven inch, and it, I wanted to go a heavier direction, you know. At the time, I started getting more into the punk, the Motorhead. And we wanted to create a heavier style. So in 83, we got as far as the pictures of the Bandmaster. Couldn't find a guitar player. We auditioned everybody on the scene in Chicago. Nobody, we just seemed to fit the bill. So then uh, the uh, drummer went and joined another band called Mayhem, recorded a demo. Not the Mayhem from Europe, but Mayhem Chicago. And uh, I put together Death Strike, recorded. He crawled back on drums and we became master again. And then it all really began, yeah. And that, that, so that first album, I guess, was recorded two separate times? Yeah, we, re well, we actually recorded a demo for Combat Records in 1985, which was never released. A famous guy read the contract, Kim Fowley. He wrote songs for Kiss. Mm -hmm. If you saw the movie, he was the manager of The Runaways as well. Well, he turned this Combat contract into a multi-million dollar contract at a dollar a minute for me to read it, and they threw it in the garbage. So Master was like dormant for a long time. It took me until 1989 to get a new contract from Nuclear Blast, and obviously everything changed after that, and I'm here today. Yeah, it must be, I mean, is there some disappointment or regret that there was that period there when obviously late 80s, everything was growing in the metal scene, and you, you recorded in 85, and it didn't really see the light of 80 or 90, right, is when it was officially... Master influenced shitloads. Exactly. Bands. They talk about it, Napalm Death, Benediction, Death, Carcass, you can ask the people that are still alive anyway, and they'll tell you. But point is, is, yeah, we got lost in the shuffle. But on the other hand, you know, the guys in Master and me were heavily into cocaine. A lot of drug use at the time, so maybe if the deal did go through, somebody would have died. Could have been me or the drummer, he was more into it, but you know, maybe somebody would have, should have, I, I believe shit happens for a reason. And here I am today, still touring the world, still making a living, have a good life in the Czech Republic, and I'm still alive. The original drummer, he's living under a bridge in Chicago somewhere, homeless. So I made the right choices, as far as I'm concerned, you know. 
Um, and also when you're writing style, you don't tend to write about a lot of the typical stuff that metal guys write about, whether it's Satan or this or that, but you were a lot more politically influenced. I guess maybe the part of that comes from the punk thing, and uh, maybe just some brief thoughts on the current political climate in the East Country, and it's part of the reason you're not living here, right? Well, it's not only this country. Uh, I'm against the politicians and the presidents, the power mongers, megalomaniacs of every country. Uh, in today's world, they're just it's more about control than anything else. They tell you what to eat, when to eat, with the TV commercials, the brain. It's like brainwashing, you know? It's like, uh, you know, Huxley said it, you know, you're going you're gonna to have chips in the future in your wrists. You know, I had these experiences where you go to the... That's all to carry the phones with the chips in them. Yeah, where you, so go the, the, you go to the airport and you got this full body scan. You're like in the TARDIS from Doctor Who. It's like ridiculous. But my point is, is freedom is beginning, uh, becoming a thing of the past, you know, and it's a shame. It's like the youth of today, they need to get organized and try and make a stand against all this political corruption, man. It's time to get rid of all these fucking overlords and be free again. Yeah. That's my feeling, yeah. It's a, it's a constant challenge to educate people because they just don't want to see it, I guess. I'm not interested. I'd rather watch TV and be told what to do. It's easy when people tell you how to do it, when to do it, what to do. I'm a free thinker. I do what I want when I want, and that's why I'm still, still here today. Doing your thing? Yeah, of course. I know it's heavy duty, but it's the reality, man. You know? Um... One other thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, just gear, if you didn't talk about gear or anything, amps, space that you use, or mics or anything that you uh, care to talk about, or yeah, plug and play? Or well, I just plug and play, but but I prefer Ampeg, of course. I've also got a hard key stack at home. Uh, i got an endorsement. Do you record with a certain amp, or do you mix and match? or? Uh, I usually record with the hard key. I usually use Ampeg live, not on this tour, but, but you know. In Europe, over there, anyway, and uh, I just got a bass endorsement with uh, Radix guitars. I've got my uh, second prototype. I'll be playing tonight. They're making a third one. It should be here when I get home. Should be back in check. They're also going to make one in America, which I'm looking forward to because I like American guitar guitars the best. American quality is the best. Good shit. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's what's going on, pretty much, yo. Know? All right, well, uh, that's all the questions I had. I want to say thanks again. Is there anything you want to add to the people on Capital Chaos TV that might be watching? Yeah, man. Believe in yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be controlled. Thank you. Hello, human scum! This is Odorous Sharungus commanding you to continue watching Capital Chaos. They support guar and anal rape and all kinds of wonderful things.